Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, it is amazing how fast things are moving right now. The convergence of events as it pertains to end times Bible prophecy is off the charts. What I want to share with you today is just another confirmation that an over 2,500 year old prophecy is on the cusp of its literal fulfillment. This is recently just in from the Times of Israel. Recent article titled, Two Iran-backed fighters said killed in Israeli airstrikes near Syrian capital. Let me read some of this to you guys. Israeli airstrikes reportedly killed two pro-Iranian fighters near the Syrian capital Damascus early on Friday during raids targeting a Hezbollah arms depot and other sites near Syria's capital. Israel has said to have hit targets in Syria several times in the past weeks as regional tensions rise over the Israel-Hamas war in the Gaza Strip. The strikes destroyed an arms depot belonging to Hezbollah, the Iran-backed Lebanese terror group fighting alongside Syria's regime. The observatory said, adding that the bombardment occurred along the road to Damascus International Airport. The observatory added that sites linked to Hezbollah and pro-Iran militias near the airport were also attacked. Israeli strikes last month put Syria's two main airports in Damascus and Aleppo out of service several times over two weeks and the Damascus terminal remains out of operation. Folks, as this Israel-Hamas war continues to get more intense, you're seeing a lot more activity around Damascus, especially these Israeli airstrikes. Now, why is this significant in regards to end times Bible prophecy? Well, I'll tell you why. Over 2,500 years ago, the prophet Isaiah records in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, the following. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. So very clearly, in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, the prophet Isaiah records, a time is coming when the city of Damascus will become a ruinous heap. It's going to be destroyed. This prophecy has not been fulfilled. Damascus is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the entire world. Yes, there is parts of Damascus that are in bad shape. However, you can still live in Damascus, Syria right now. Uh, but this prophecy makes it very clear. A time is coming when the city of Damascus will become a heap of ruins. It will be destroyed. And when you read further on in Isaiah chapter 17, it actually tells you when it will be destroyed. In Isaiah chapter 17, verse 14, we read the following, and behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. So very clearly, in Isaiah chapter 17, over 2,500 years ago, the prophet Isaiah records something is going to happen that causes the city of Damascus to become a heap of ruins. It will be destroyed, and it's going to happen overnight in Damascus, Syria. And what's incredible, if you look at this massive uptick of Israeli airstrikes in and surrounding Damascus, Syria, most of them are happening overnight. And they're targeting Iranian targets, mainly Hezbollah. I want to connect the dots with you guys on this. Damascus is the hub of terror that Iran and its proxies, more specifically Hezbollah, are using to distribute weapons, possibly nuclear, to use against Israel. We know, since this war is now happening on multiple fronts against Israel, Hezbollah and the other proxies of Iran are reloading and getting a majority of their weapons from Damascus, Syria. We know that Iran has had over 80 Iranian cargo planes land at Damascus International Airport over the past 18 months. And what do you think is on those planes, folks? 
you guessed correctly, weapons to use against Israel. We know Bashar al-Assad, the current president of Syria, has nuclear weapons and chemical weapons in Damascus, Syria. We also know that Israel has recently come forth and said that if Hezbollah goes into all-out war against Israel, Israel will destroy Damascus with one of the main targets as Bashar al-Assad. We know that generals have come forth and said that there is nuclear material underground in Damascus, Syria. So when you connect all the dots with Damascus as the place Iran and its proxies are using to distribute weapons to use against Israel, and when this, with this current war going on, they are reloading and resupplying in Damascus. The Israeli airstrikes against Damascus are increasing. And as this current war rages on and intensifies and others join in, we have the direct threat from Israel to destroy Damascus and target Bashar al-Assad. If Hezbollah, which again has over 150,000 rockets currently pointed at Israel, launches an all-out assault. What are we to do with this? Well, you can take from this what you want, but we know what the Bible says, that Damascus will be destroyed. It will become a heap of ruins, and it will occur overnight in Damascus, Syria. And what we are seeing unfold right now is just showing us that we are on the cusp of this prophecy being fulfilled. We know, according to Isaiah chapter 17, again, it will happen overnight in Damascus. And this prophecy literally could be fulfilled at any moment. So all I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You'll see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the light boat right here and right now. That light boat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you, you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Belief. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary. So you could be reconciled back to him forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real literal places and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures and do it now because tomorrow is not promised and make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me and God bless you all.